Okay, so I've got a Tygo 7.6 kilowatt inverter in the box. I just cut the tape on it. Let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, so the first thing that pops out is the packaging that has the rapid shutdown sticker and the quick start guide. Nice and pretty in there. Let's take a look at that. Since I think a lot of people may not even know what it looks like. Look at that. Two pager. Not too shabby. I tell you, if you follow what this thing says, you will probably prevent 80% of all service calls we get to our service line. So make sure this does not go in the corner with all the trash. All right, put that off to the side. Next thing we see is the inverted mounting bracket. Right there. Put that off to the side. And we'll take this off. Take off the plastic. Might have to lift it up. Easier said than done. There we go. There we go. Pretty. All right, we still got some stuff underneath the inverter. Let's take a look. We have our rapid shutdown switch. This has to be used with our inverter. Nothing too crazy there. Inside here is the Tygo access point. This is installed on the roof and it communicates with the inverter and with the TS4 O and S products. And then we have a baggie and another baggie with different conduit plugs, different mounting hardware, Wi-Fi antenna, cell phone antenna, different Phoenix connectors, ferrules, hardware, you name it. It's all in there. All right, so let's take a look at the bottom. We have plenty of one inch and three quarter inch knockouts. You can see the antennas for the Wi-Fi in the cellular uh, antenna here. The old ON OFF switch right here with lockout tag out feature. And that's about it. For the bottom, we can see the lower mounting bracket here. That'll go right into the mounting surface. Easy peasy. All right, so you'll need a five millimeter hex to take off the four screws that hold the wiring box cover on. Okay, these are not self-retaining, so keep an eye on them when you pull them out. Maybe a little hard to get off because of the gasket here, so I'll just give it a good tug. Be careful of the LED tubes. All right, wow, there's a lot going on in there. Let's zoom in on that. Okay, so in no particular order, we have the AC terminals here and they are labeled down below. You can see uh, this is grid, line one, line two, and neutral. There's already a black wire in this terminal here, so don't do anything with that. Next, we move over to the backup terminal. Now, this goes to the 50 amp ATS only. And you can see L1, L2 here. Again, if you have any questions, just look at the quick start guide. Next, we have the battery positive and negative terminals here. Then we have three MPPTs or three strings for this inverter. They're labeled here, PV positive, one, two, three, PV negative, one, two, three. So this tells me that that's a 7.6 kilowatt inverter because that's the only one that has only three terminals. The 11.4 kilowatt inverter has all four of these terminals here for positive and all four here for negative. And while we're on the subject, the 3.8 kilowatt inverter will only have two strings in it. So it'll only have these two here for positive, these two for negative. 
And since we're in this general vicinity, this terminal here is the battery communication terminal. So this goes right to the battery RJ45 connector in the battery. So you would just make a Cat5, Cat6 cable, connect it in here, like that. And then the other end of this would go to the battery. All right, so continuing on with communication, we'll look at the energy meter connection. We have a three pin terminal right here. In that accessories bag, you'll get this three pin Phoenix connector, A, G, B labels on it. You will connect the wires as per the installation manual or quick start guide rather. And you'll just insert this here. It only goes in one way, screws pointing up, easy peasy. Okay, so the tap comes in its own box, Tygo access point. And it comes with the inverter. There we go. That. There we go. All right, so we've got two terminals here. This is by default from the factory. We have negative, positive for power, and then BA for data. Okay, yeah, they're labeled and they're labeled the same over here. Um, I mean, really, as long as the wires going from left to right match the CCA terminal where this connects from bottom to top, then you'll be fine. So remember, left to right, bottom to top. And if the wires match, then you're good to go. If you do need another tap, which if you have a, a roof with some really high angles, uh, this is a wireless transmitter and it may not be able to transmit over the roof to the other side, so you may need to get another one. So all you would do, whatever sequence of wires you have here, you do the same thing here, but you will have to remove that little terminating resistor on the second tap, you will leave it in, and that indicates that it is the end of the chain. So not very hard there. It does, like I say, go here. Just like that. So you can do all the wiring here and then put it in. It only goes in one way. Okay, and so the last piece of communication that you would install is the rapid shutdown switch and it would terminate here and now it's kind of hard to get to that and so what you would do is just take these off very carefully just like that okay and now we can clearly see the pin connector here so we pull that out take a look at it see there's already a jumper in there so as long as there's a jumper it won't go into rapid shutdown. So what you would do is you have to pull this jumper out and then on the switch, you would wire one pin number one here would go to one end on the rapid shutdown switch and then the other one would go to the other end so that you just make a loop. And then when you hit the button, it initiates rapid shutdown. But a lot of people get hung up with this because it is hidden behind those wires. But like I said, just pull it out and uh, easy peasy. Okay, so I changed the camera angle a little bit just to show these terminals a little more clearly. Uh, but you can see right here, it's where the meter goes, right back here, rapid shutdown, CCA wires would go here. Now, if you want to run a hard wire ethernet to the inverter, that's totally fine too if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi. And that's what this terminal here is. That's an RJ45, that is for uh, internet connection. Okay, and right underneath the AC terminal block is the grounding bar here. Plenty of open connections there for equipment ground. So just something uh, kind of FYI, I think it's kind of interesting. If you're familiar with Tygo products and you know our Cloud Connect Advanced and the RSS transmitter, we actually have those two communication products inside the EI inverter, and they're right here. 
So this is the CCA board that is in the Cloud Connect Advanced. We just took it out of the housing, put it in here. And right here, you can see the RSS transmitter board with the core connections on the, on, on the bottom of the card. All right, so here is the Tygo Rapid shutdown switch that is included in the shipping box with the inverter, uh, emergency stop switch rather, uh, for rapid shutdown. But it's got two plainly labeled positions. When it's out, it is on, and then off means it is pressed. So yeah, you see green, that means everything is good. This is a normally closed switch, which is just a fancy way of saying it's normally on. And to turn it off or to engage rapid shutdown, you just push down, green goes away. And now you have initiated rapid shutdown on the Tygo inverter. And to turn the switch back on, you would just rotate the handle like that. Okay, so I've loosened the four screws. Just pop them off. They are not self-retaining, so they will pop out. So as I turn it over to show you the switch, they kind of fall out sometimes. But there's not a lot going on here. Okay, you see one terminal here. Here's a screw for it. On the other side is another terminal. And you're just going to go from this terminal into the RSD plug on one side, and then from this one to the other. It's just completing a circle. And when you push this down, it breaks that signal and it goes into rapid shutdown. Now, the cool thing about this switch is that not only will it engage rapid shutdown on the inverter, it will also turn the battery off if you're using the Tygo battery with the inverter. And if you're using the 200 amp ATS with generator support, it will also turn off the generator. So it's a one-stop shop switch.